Hello, welcome to my talk on physical modeling, fraud similitude for the physical modeling of marine structures, other than the physical modeling of the aerodynamic structures. This is the first part of three talks on this topic, fraud similitude. On why and how we can carry out physical modeling of marine structures. Let's watch a video of the Palamas model test in the Primus wave tank. This is the model test for the five segment Palamas wave energy converter. We can see the large amplitude motions of the device in such a large wave. In the model test, we can also see the fluorescent balls on the structure for measuring the motion of the device. We have many different types of marine structures, including the wave generation by a boat traveling on the sea. We can see the shape of the wave, which is called as Kelvin ship wave. Kelvin ship wave could have a similar pattern, especially in the deep water. Another example is the wave generation by a duck, which has a similar wave pattern as that of the ship. For ships, we might need to study the drag of the ship traveling at different speed and the motion due to the wave and the structural interaction. For a floating structure, either in measuring the wave or extracting energy from the waves. It is basically a problem of wave and structure interaction. The ocean platform under the actions of wind, wave, and the current, and many more examples. The question is how we can carry out the study more accurately and reliably. For instance, take a design of a ship as an example. In the development of the ship design, we need to understand the performance of the ship reliably before the real construct of the ship. Here, the USS Gerard R for the aircraft carrier. The information is from the internet. The aircraft carrier has an overall length of 333 meters and the full load of 110,000 long tons. That is 101.6 million kilograms. The maximum speed is about 30 knots. That is 56 kilometer per hour or 15.56 meters per second. The question we are looking at the design would be, can we design a ship with the desired speed and the given power? Would the motion of the ship be small enough in waves? For instance, to allow aircraft to take off or landing, or to carry out the installation and the maintenance. The most important question would be how we can carry out this study most accurately and reliably. The dynamics problem of the marine structures are mainly for the performance 
or motions of the marine structure and the fluid structure interaction or wave structure interaction. For solving the dynamics problem of the marine structure, we have three different approaches. We can use numerical modeling, but can we solve the navier stokes equation for this? Or can we use the simplified method to study the problem with enough confidence? It is accurate or it is reliable. We can use the scale model test. In the scale model test, can we model all the dynamics correctly? Or how we can reduce the scaling effect? How we can extrapolate the experiment data to the full scale structure? Or we can use the full scale test, but this is a very expensive way to check the design, whether it is satisfy all the requirements. However, this would be important for collecting the data for further development, for calibrating the numerical tools, or for correlating the scale model test. In this talk, I will focus on the scale model test, and in this part, the fundamental issues on why and how we can carry out the scale model test are introduced. In the scale model test, the similitude rules plays a very important role, and this similitude rules could guarantee the success of scaled physical modeling. For a successful scale modeling, we have three similitudes. The first is the geometric similitude, for which the scale model must be similar geometrically to the full scale structure, which means in all directions, the length of the structure and the model must be proportional correctly. And in some special circumstances, the structure surface must be scaled. The second similitude is the kinematic similitude. This corresponds to the motion similarities. For instance, if we have a laminar flow in the small scaled model, but the flow for the full structure is turbulent. In that case, the kinematic similitude is not satisfied. The third similitude is the dynamic similitude, meaning all the forces acting on the structure and the model are similar. This dynamic similitude can be guaranteed by ensuring the same non-dimensional numbers for the full scale and the scaled model. For instance, the Reynolds number, which is the ratio of the inertia force over the viscous force, or the fluid number, a ratio of the inertia force over the gravitational force. For the study of the conventional marine structures, these two non-dimensional numbers would be used. In the physical modeling, it is useful to estimate the orders of magnitude of the forces. Basically, these forces would be the functions of the following physical parameters include the physical length L, the fluid velocity U, the fluid viscosity mu, 
the fluid density rho and the gravitational acceleration g. For marine structures, three types of forces are considered. Inertia force, which corresponding to the fluid dynamic pressure and its order of magnitude is given as rho u squared and l squared. And the gravitational force is actually the weight of the structure or the fluid displaced by the structure according to the Archimedes buoyancy principle, which is given in a form of rho g l cubic. The viscous force due to the fluid viscosity is given in a form mu u l. Based on the orders of the magnitudes of the forces, we can see if we have two different scale model, for instance, 3 meters and 6 meters in length. So according to the relevant similitude, for instance, the flow, the similitude, we have the corresponding changes in the forces as the inertia force would be 8 times of the force for the large model over that of the small model. And the gravitational force would be 8 times, but the viscous force would be 2.83 times. This fundamental balance among the three types of the forces must be considered for a successful physical modeling. For instance, what are the main forces we are focused on the scale model? For example, the viscous force is important? And what is the appropriate size for a scaled model testing? So we may think about the question, is this model good for testing? Is it good for the tank size? Because we must consider the scaling effect, the blocking effect, and etc. Are the forces all properly modeled since the forces would be significantly different in laminar and in turbulent flow. Can the measurement be appropriately made in the lab? So the appropriate sensors are important for the test data. Too large or too small sensors would not be good for the test. In the next few slides, we will use dimensional analysis to start the hydrodynamic force acting on a floating structure under the action of the wave. And we will see how the dimensional analysis could simplify the problem. So the first step, we need to identify the physical variables which might have effect on the hydrodynamic force, F, H, Y, D. Obviously, the hydrodynamic force would be very relevant to the fluid velocity. Fluid viscosity is surely important for the hydrodynamic force. Fluid density for different fluids, the hydrodynamic force would be different. Structure length would be a very important factor for the hydrodynamic force. Gravitational acceleration may be an important factor for the hydrodynamic force acting on the structure. That because the ocean wave is a gravitational wave, which is very relevant to the gravitational force.
So in a general form, the hydrodynamic force can be expressed as a function as this. Here, we can see there are total six variables or parameters in the problem. The variable of the hydrodynamic force and the five variables in the function. Therefore, we have the number n of six. For such a problem, there are three base units, length L, unit meter, mass M, unit kg, and time T, unit second. So we have the base unit number M equaling to three. However, in the analysis for this base unit, the representatives are chosen as the structure lens for the base lens and the fluid density for the base unit mass because the mass can be expressed as the fluid density times the structure lens cubic and the velocity for the base unit time the time can be calculated as the length divided by the velocity. So based on the principle of dimensional analysis, the Buckingham Pi theorem, we can calculate the number of long-dimensional group n minus m equaling to 3. If you want to see more details on the dimensional analysis, you can watch my talk titled Dimensional Analysis. So the first group of the non-dimensional parameter, pi1, given as this. So we can define a coefficient of the hydrodynamic force, chyd, given as this. The second non-dimensional parameter would be pi2, given as this. So the corresponding non-dimensional number would be the Reynolds number, RE, defined in this formula. And the third non-dimensional parameter, pi3, given as this, and from which we can deduce the fluid number as this, FR. After the dimensional analysis, the hydrodynamic force coefficient can be expressed as the function of the Reynolds number and the fluid number given in this form. So if we compare with the original form of the hydrodynamic force FHYD, which is a function of five parameters, we can see the problem is much simplified. As such, we can study the relation of the hydrodynamic force coefficient with the Reynolds number and the flow number. So the problem becomes a problem of long-dimensional parameter, Reynolds number and the flow number, two variables, versus the function of five physical variables, velocity, viscosity, density, length, and gravitational acceleration. And once the hydrodynamic force coefficient is determined, the hydrodynamic force can be easily calculated from the definition of the hydrodynamic force coefficient. Another advantage for this simplified expression is in many turbulent flows of a very large Reynolds number, the viscous force becomes relatively small when compared to the gravitational force, and thus it is, can be neglected. So we can have the expression simply as this. The hydrodynamic force coefficient is only dependent on the flow number, and this relation has been served as the principle for physical modeling test in the wave tank.
So for the physical modeling, the advantages include the four physical phenomena can be included if the modeling is appropriate. The controlled lab condition to isolate some dynamic effect or create the extreme condition in minutes. For instance, use regular wave or creating in minutes the extreme events of, for instance, once in 50 or 100 years. Easy and accurate measurement using the collect sensor with good signal connection, good reference for measuring. It could provide the fast optimization process. The model modification can be made relatively easy. The installation and the removal of the device would be easy because the model would not be too large and uh, too heavy. And the cost for the physical model test would be cheaper when compared to the full scale C trial. Similarly, we have also several disadvantages for the physical modeling, include model manufacturing. Is the model is fully down scaled? The model surface roughness is scaled and etc. The scaling effect, how large the model is appropriate. The block effect, whether a large tank is available for testing a large test model. Some long-term effects would be difficult. For example, by folding on the marine structure on wave energy converter, which would affect the performance of the marine structure and the wave energy converters. For the wave energy converter, the power takeoff system and the control system would be difficult to be modeled. For instance, in many small wave energy converter, its wave power is about one watt. So this is difficult for the practical power takeoff system or the control system. Hence, we have feasibility problems here. And the cost could be expensive when compared to the conventional numerical modeling.